This is a demonstration of the Boyd's algorithm implemented on the RP2040. That algorithm has been slightly modified to visualize distributed consensus in animal groups. That distributed consensus algorithm is described in a Letters to Nature paper by Kuzen, Krauss, Franks, and Levin. That paper is titled Effective Leadership and Decision Making in Animal Groups on the Move. Uh, I'm not going to get in the de into the details of that algorithm here, but what I'll do instead is demonstrate the phenomena that that paper describes. So what we're looking at right now is a collection of 500 Boyds that are all updating their positions and velocities based on the observed positions and velocities of their closest neighbors. And you can see also that when they leave the white boundary drawn on the screen, they start to gently turn back towards the center of the screen. And through a command line interface, I can change the shape of that boundary. So for instance, I could make that boundary look like the following. So it now is a column, and the Boyds that leave the top of the screen reappear at the bottom of the screen, much like in a game of Pac-Man. And if the whole group happened to be moving in the opposite direction, in fact, let me see if I can turn the group around. So I've put it back to the box, and then I can change the boundary conditions again. So now the whole group is moving in the opposite direction, and you can see that those that leave the bottom appear back at the top. And I can play with the width of that column. So for instance, I could make it a bit narrower. Sort of interestingly, if you make this column too narrow for the amount of Boyds in the collection, you can start to see pressure waves propagating through the group, much like you see in traffic jams on a, on a highway. And I could make this wider if I wanted to. The, the other option that I have as far as boundaries go is to eliminate them altogether. And in this configuration, the Boyds that leave the top appear at the bottom, the Boyds that leave at the bottom appear at the top, and likewise for left and right. Those that leave the left or right side of the screen appear on the opposite side. So let me just put this back to the way that it was. Um, the other thing that I can do through this command line interface is assign a configurable number of the Boyds a bias towards the left or the right side of the screen. And just to illustrate what I mean by that, let me, let me uh, bias the entire group to the right side of the screen. So you can see that the whole group has turned cyan, cyan to indicate that they're moving towards the right side of the screen, and they start marching off towards the right. And you can also see that when they move past the right side of the screen, they appear again on the left side of the screen. So let me then just put this back to the way that it was. And um, I could also, if I cared to, bias them in the opposite direction. So let me just show what that looks like. I will now bias all of the Boyds to move towards the left side of the screen. And you can see that those that are biased towards the left turn magenta instead of cyan, and they start marching off towards the left side of the screen. So let me put this back to how it was. Far more interesting, however, than biasing the whole group is to instead bias only a small subset of the group and to observe the behavior of the whole group as a result of that small biased subset. Um, the paper by, by Kuzen, Krauss, Franks, and Levin describes how a very, very small minority of biased individuals can influence the whole collective to move in the direction of their bias. So you see this sort of thing in nature where you may have a very large animal group where only a small subset of that group knows, has a preference in the direction of travel. Perhaps they have some knowledge about the location of a food source or something of that variety. But with a, with a very, very small number of informed individuals, the whole group of uninformed individuals can be pulled in the direction of that bias. So to show what I mean, let me set up a... I'm going to give uh, 25 of the Boyds a gentle bias towards the right side of the screen. Let me just do that, and I'll eliminate the boundaries. If you look very closely, you may be able to see that some of the Boyds now appear cyan. It's a little bit difficult to see with this camera. Um, but what you'll see is that over a little bit of time, the majority, the unbiased majority, will start to amplify the bias, amplify the preference of the biased minority. 
And if we give this just a little bit of time, we'll see the entire group start to march off towards the right side of the screen. And it takes just a little bit of time to kick in, but then indeed we see the whole group start to march off towards the right side of the screen. So a very small biased minority has influenced the unbiased majority uh, in the direction of its bias. So let me put this back to the way that it was. The other interesting thing that we can observe is instead of having only a single biased group, we could have two biased groups with different directions of bias. So for instance, I can assign 25 of the boys to be biased towards the right side of the screen and 25 to be biased towards the left side of the screen. And furthermore, I can make the strength of that bias a dynamic variable, which is to say, if a particular boy is biased towards the right side of the screen and it detects that it is moving in the direction of its bias, it's moving towards the right side of the screen, then it in increases the strength of its conviction. It starts to update its velocity with more weight on the direction of its bias than on the observed positions and velocity of its neighbors. Alternatively, if a boy is biased towards the right side of the screen and it notices that it's moving opposite the direction of that bias, it's being pulled in the opposite direction by its neighbors, then it reduces the strength of its bias. It starts to update its velocity, paying less attention to its direction of bias and more attention to the positions and velocities of its neighbors. In the situation where those two biased groups are of equal size and of equal conviction, then the whole collection will choose one or the other direction to travel at random. So let me, just to illustrate this, I'm gonna give 25 voids a bias towards the right side of the screen and 25 towards the left, and I'll eliminate the boundary. And here again, if you look closely, you may be able to see 25 cyan voids and 25 magenta voids. They have differing opinions about the direction the group should go, but over a little bit of time, the whole collection will choose one or the other direction of travel. Now we may see elongation in that direction of travel. The boys that are moving opposite the direction of bias may trail slightly behind those that are moving in the direction of their bias, but the whole group will, will remain cohesive under these conditions. If we were to play with the strength of these, these biases and play with the amount of members in each of these bias groups, we could start to make the group split apart. But under these conditions, the group remains cohesive. So you can see that uh, in this experiment, the whole group decided to go left. If we were to run this another time or a bunch more times, we would sometimes see the group go left and sometimes see it go right. In these conditions where the amount of uh, the amount of members of each biased subset is the same. Now, in the event that it's not the same, we can illustrate something else observable in nature, which is the decision-making process used by honeybees to choose a new nesting location. And just to provide a little bit of context about the experiment that I'm about to run, this is in connection with uh, a paper by Tom Seeley of Cornell, who, is, who studies uh, honeybee behavior and decision-making. And what Seeley and his colleagues observed is that when a, when a particular honeybee colony grows too large, it will split itself into two colonies. And the departing colony will come to rest on a nearby tree or a nearby branch and conserve energy while a small number of scouts goes out and tries to find new locations where the colony can go form a more permanent home. And those scouts will go and, and look for locations and then they come back to the colony and they report the distance and direction to those locations by means of a waggle dance. And over a period of time, a few days, the number of candidate locations that the colony's deliberating over will reduce from more than 10 down to a much smaller number. But it may not reduce to one. The, the colony will take flight when those scout bees detect that a particular location has a quorum number of scouts voting for it. That is to say, not all the scouts agree on the direction that the colony should go, but a sufficient number agrees that a distributed consensus will be reached and the whole group will move in the direction of the candidate location that has the quorum number of scouts voting for it. So just to illustrate this process, I am going to assign two biased groups. I'm going to give 
15 boids a bias towards the right side of the screen, and I'm going to give 35 boids a bias towards the left side of the screen, and I'm going to eliminate the boundary. And here again, too, if you look closely, you should be able to see 35 magenta boids and 15 cyan boids. And what we should see is the colony will move in the direction of the larger, the, in the direction of preference of the bias group that has reached a quorum number of voters, which in this case is the group that wants to go left. And here we can see some elongation in the direction of travel, but the collection is still remaining cohesive. So despite the fact that there were dissenting opinions about the direction that this group should go, the group has collectively decided to move in the direction of the biased subset that has reached quorum. And we're seeing some of that elongation here as well. So let me just put this back to the way that it was.